I'm here at the site of a future bus rapid transit station in front of NC State University. This is along one of four planned BRT corridors in the city of Raleigh that are supposed to revitalize roads like the one behind me and turn them into bastions of dense mixed-use development. However, will this system have the effect that I and the local government want it to? What exactly is BRT anyways? And what would make it the right or wrong choice for your own city? Let's explore. First things first, a little background. Raleigh, like almost every other city in the country, entered the 20th century with an extensive streetcar network that was ultimately torn apart and paved over in favor of automobiles. The city has since become extremely sprawled with your classic signs of heavy car dependence, strip malls, strodes, cookie cutter, single family homes, you name it. However, there's still a few things going for it. The downtown core, while not large, was not ever dissected by freeways, a problem which plagues almost every city on the continent. It has a fantastic network of multi-use greenway paths, and the city council is putting in real effort to enact zoning reform and improve the pedestrian and cyclist experience. However, a comprehensive public transportation system has long been absent here, and really the entire Triangle region, which is starting to form something of a megalopolis. The bus system is okay, but the frequencies are not good and most destinations will still require a lot of walking or multiple transfers. Finally though, the local government identified four branches extending out of downtown that would be excellent rapid transit corridors beyond the usual bus service. Western Boulevard, which will include NC State University and the town of Cary. The Northern Corridor, which will try to transform the worst road in the city in Capitol Boulevard. The Southern Corridor, linking downtown Raleigh and the town of Garner. And the busy Newburn Avenue to the east, which is scheduled to start construction later this year and begin revenue service by 2024. What exactly is BRT though, and how does it differ from a regular high frequency bus service? Let me explain. The major trait of most BRT lines is that they run on separate, dedicated bus-only lanes. These services will typically be on very busy arterial roads, and the transit wouldn't really be rapid if it got stuck in traffic. Not all BRT systems have their own lanes though, and because buses are so flexible, you can do a sort of hybrid approach. For example, on the Newburn Corridor, as you go farther east and the volume of both riders and traffic begins to taper, the buses will ultimately enter mixed traffic until they go back in the other direction. Next are the stations. They'll typically feature nice, covered seating with raised platforms for quicker and more accessible boarding. The buses themselves are often articulated, which essentially means that they are super long and they'll run with relatively frequent headways, probably between 5 and 20 minutes depending on the day and time. Now, there's a lot of debate between BRT and other types of transit like light rail. They are pretty similar after all. Raised platforms, sometimes in the median of busy arterials, similar headways, etc. I will defer my opinion on this topic specifically to other content creators like Alan Fisher or RM Transit, both of whom I highly recommend and who have already had excellent videos on this topic. But I will highlight a few key points. Rail vehicles are generally cheaper to operate, can carry more passengers, are better for the environment, and are way cooler to me because I just really love trains. So while the common opinion by enthusiasts tends to be that light rail is the superior mode, and I agree, I do want to express that I think it is highly situational, and the case in Raleigh is no different. I think they made the right choice, and here's why. Raleigh is growing very quickly, more so than many other cities around the country. This is also the closest we've gotten to any real rapid public transit systems in the area, and it has been a huge challenge. We need something that can do the job, but with as much flexibility as possible, as cheap as possible, and BRT is just that. While more expensive in the long run, it does have a lower initial cost, and because in the end it is buses running on a pavement, it is a flexible system that can can grow and change easily with the area. I think it is just what we need to get over that first rapid transit hump that can ultimately lead to more transit growth in the area. I think a city also has to be very intentional with zoning and development along so-called transit corridors, especially BRT. 
You want density and walkability to solve the last mile problem, among other things, and outdated zoning and parking minimums will actively hinder that effort. Raleigh is creating a brand new type of zoning area called Transit Overlay Districts just for this purpose, to support and encourage dense mixed use development around these transit corridors. Now, one last thing I wanna note, this kind of sounds like gentrification and you do need to be careful about that. In Raleigh, these BRT corridors are, after all, along generally the more impoverished areas in the city. New infill development is great and we need it to help solve the housing crisis, but all of this activity and these nice amenities cannot just be for the wealthy. Obviously, new affordable housing is its own issue that I won't delve into here, but rapid transit corridors should still be practical and highly accessible for anyone in the area, especially low-income families who may not have a car. That is why it is essential to also increase pedestrian and bike connectivity to the BRT stations from the outlying neighborhoods. I think Raleigh is doing a good job of that, but it's something that we need to keep an eye on. Overall though, I do think that BRT was absolutely the right choice for this city. I think it will completely transform these areas in a positive way, and I'm really excited to be able to finally have some real, practical, frequent public transportation in the Triangle region. That said, if the city can avoid some of the pitfalls of bad transit services, like frequencies that are too low to be useful for commuting, then eventually I'd love to see the city consider upgrading the BRT corridors to rail, which is something that definitely can happen if ridership is very high. Anyways, let me know what you think if you live around here, or if not, whether you feel like BRT would be a good transit solution in a city near you. Likewise, if you've already experienced it, let me know your opinion and how it's worked out. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.